What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross, I like games, and today, I've got some well exciting news. Though to be 100% clear, when I say news, the most exciting thing here hasn't been confirmed. It's not been announced, but I think we've got enough information to say that it's happening. Come on. It's happening. Now, we knew that we were getting some official Keyforge stuff. And this was popped on the Facebook group yesterday. And I thought, you know what? I should have a gander at this. And the most exciting thing, which I do not think people are making enough of a big deal about, is a new deck box design. That's fine. It's a durable PP box, self-locking lid, right on stripes, Keyforge branding. It's fine. Except it's coming with stickers. And you can use these stickers to denote what houses are in your particular deck. And there's two question marks. Now, I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but that says to me pretty gosh darned clearly that we're going to be getting two more houses. And of course we are. The fact that we're getting new houses in Keyforge, that's not particularly news per se. Because, well, I mean, come on. They were never going to give us every house in set one. That was never going to happen. Secondly, seven some weird, awkward prime number nine makes way more sense. And thirdly... I mean, look, Richard Garfield in an interview, it was on YouTube, I'll try and link it in the description if I can find it, talked about the possibility of adding future houses. And there was a podcast done with Brad by, well, Archon's Corner. And I've not been able to catch the podcast yet, but they tell me that in the podcast, Brad did say there will be new houses in the future. According to Ryan the Wookiee Satilla, who ran the podcast, Brad on our show last night said there will 100% be new houses in future sets. So we always knew that new houses were coming. The fact that new houses were coming is not terribly important or exciting. We all kind of knew that. But I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, there is absolutely no reason whatsoever to print these boxes with the question marks if we're not getting two new houses fairly soon. I'm not saying we'll know about them in a week, although if you're asking me for my prediction, I think they're going to announce it at Gen Con. We know that Keyforge is going to have a presence at Gen Con. We know there's going to be a tournament. We know that Gen Con is the biggest tabletop convention in the world. We know that Keyforge was shown off and the very first demo decks were given out at Gen Con last year. And just to be clear, I have no inside information. This is all reckless speculation. But come on. Gen Con is the best time to announce it. It is the biggest tournament. It's a tournament we know Fantasy Flight Games are going to be at. It's a tournament, or indeed a convention, where they had a big presence and announcement last year. If they're going to announce it in the next couple of months, I see no reason why they wouldn't announce it at Gen Con. I think it's pretty clear that if we're getting the announcement soon, we're going to get it at Gen Con. Because here's the thing, right? They didn't have to give us those question marks. They could have just printed the seven house stickers. Because it takes more effort to design and print this with the question mark stickers. It would have been easier just to have a blank space there. I am convinced that we are getting two new houses in the near future. I'm not saying we're going to know what they are tomorrow. I, I am genuinely shocked more people are not speculating about this. I don't see any reason to print them unless there are going to be new houses in the future. Because otherwise, you've wasted design time putting the extra stuff on this sticker sheet. It doesn't make sense to me. Now, a couple of people have said, well, hang on a second. Why have you got the right on strip and spaces to stick the stickers? Why not just leave holes in the deck box? And my response to you is, ever spilt water on your deck box? ever picked up a deck box with slightly dirty hands? Most people have. I don't want holes in my deck box. I want my deck box sealed because it protects my cards better. If something falls on my deck box, my deck box protects my cards. If something falls on my deck box 
and there's a space, it can go and dent my cards. And remember, Keyforge is a unique deck game. What that means is, if you damage one card in your deck, you can never, ever play that deck again. Now, if you damage it during a tournament, you will be allowed to essentially play it for the rest of the tournament. You'll be given a proxy. But after that, ladies and gentlemen, no, 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 no. It's gone forever. That deck is unplayable. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I want to avoid that, if at all possible. I refuse to believe that leaving holes in a deck box is a good idea. I know a lot of the custom deck boxes, I know a lot of the fan-made deck boxes have done this and fine, but I don't want deck boxes with holes in. It protects your cards worse in a game where protecting your cards is absolutely crucial. Because otherwise... You lose your deck. This isn't like Pokemon. We're going to use Pokemon as an example in a moment. This isn't like Pokemon where you're like, oh, my card's damaged. I'll get a new one. Even something like a Rainbow Rare Reshiram and Charizard, which is a card you'll generally pay like $200 for at the moment. Even if you damage your Reshiram and Charizard, you can still buy a new one. It might suck, but you can buy a new one. If you damage one of your Keyforge cards, your deck is gone. And you can never play it again. And the decks are unique, so you will never find it again. Now, why would they add two new houses here? Well, let, let's give a little bit of a background. Let's use Pokemon as a nice example here. Because the Pokemon trading card game, the base set, was released in 1999. And it introduced... A whole bunch of Pokemon energy types. Not as many as in the video game, that would be super awkward. But it introduced us to seven different types of Pokemon. Grass, fire, water, lightning, fighting, psychic, and colorless. And it sat in shield for almost two years... But then in December 2000, Neo Genesis was released. Now... I know it's one year later technically, but it's actually January 99 to December 2000, so you talk in two years. And then they introduced darkness and metal typings. They introduced two new typings, and that was cool. That was two years later. And then we waited a long time, ladies and gentlemen. We waited a long time. And then Dragons Exalted came out. And this was 12 years later. In August 2012, eh, near as darn it 12 years later, and that introduced dragon types. That's kind of cool, ladies and gentlemen. They waited 12 years and they were like, hey, have another typing. And then in February 2014, about a year and a half later, we found ourselves in the X and Y base set with fairy Pokemon being introduced. So now... We're sitting with 11 different types of Pokemon rather than the seven we had straight away. No, I am not saying by any stretch of the imagination that Keyforge is going to follow the exact same template that Pokemon did, though they did both start with essentially seven types. What I am going to tell you is that in games like this, it makes sense to introduce new factions. Initially, moderately early on, and then you wait a little bit, and then you introduce them quite a bit later. The thing that's been troubling me ever since I thought about this was, what are they going to do? Now, let's be clear, I am not a professional game designer, and I'm sure a bunch of you guys aren't either. So I don't really know. The two ideas I've had are cowboys, because we've not got anything really cowboyish yet, and kind of mystical arts. Think the dude from Gremlins. Because we've had a lot of the archetypes we would expect in terms of factions introduced in our seven houses in Keyforge. I've seen a bunch of people saying, yeah, but the houses tend to have their own gimmicks. What else is there to introduce that wouldn't fit into the seven existing houses? And my answer is, uh. But once again, I'm not a professional game designer. So it's not really for me to decide. I probably wouldn't have come up with Alpha or Omega. 
The fact of the matter is, we're going to get new stuff in every set, at least for a little while, build out the game. Why not some new houses? I am not saying we are definitely getting new houses in the next couple of weeks. But I am saying two things super clearly, so that you can see why I decided to make this video. Number one, I think it is very, very likely that we will have two new houses introduced in the near future. Because if they weren't going to be introduced in the near future, there's no reason to hint at it with these new deck boxes. Secondly, I am making a prediction, though I am less sure about this that we are going to have new houses revealed at Gen Con because it makes so much sense to do it at Gen Con. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. I was excited enough when I saw this to make a speculation video. Hopefully, you can all take this for what it is in the... Hang on a second. That looks like getting new houses. Let's have a chat about this. Not trying to bait you into thinking that new houses have been revealed. They haven't. I was really clear about this. But come on. I've showed my working. I would, however, like to see your working, so let me know in the comment section. Do you think I'm onto something, or do you think I'm completely off base? Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk about games, like Keyforge, and a whole bunch of others. But by far the most important thing, as always, look after yourselves till next time thank you very much for watching my name is ross and you've been watching wassy plays